Yo, yo, it's Ropo, guys, and welcome to 100 Days in Minecraft Dragonfire. We all know that Luke the Notable started this whole 100 Days thing, and um, yeah, it's taken off from there. We've seen 100 Days Duos, 100 Days Ultra Hardcore, 100 Days Jurassic World, 100 Days Pixelmon, but we have never seen 100 Days in Minecraft Dragonfire. So I've decided that it is finally time for me to get on board with the whole 100 Days of Minecraft craze. I've spent two weeks on this video, so I hope you enjoy. Hit a like rating if you do, and do, share, do all that stuff. Let, let's just start. Alright, so it's time to start a fresh new world and just get straight into this. It's day one. So, as always, when you join a Minecraft world, you look around and realize, well, I'm on my own. I need to start punching a tree. So, I start punching a tree. Then it's time to make myself a crafting table and, of course, some lovely, lovely sticks. Then I can make myself some tools and, um, yeah. I'm ready to Minecraft. Oh wait, I've, I've got to get myself some breakfast first. Sorry guys. And then I get to my first bit of mining in, in Minecraft. But there they are. My first dragons inside my dragon fire world. Oh, this is gonna be good. Time to get to work. I need some cobblestone so I can make myself a furnace so I can get myself some delicious food. And of course, upgrade my weapons so I can get more food. Once again, guys, I'm super sorry. <laughs> Obviously, this is not your standard Minecraft world. Over there is the first dragon nest we see, so gotta make ourselves a lovely little boat and sail right across. In the meantime, we see a rare dragon for the first time. Um, this is getting exciting already. I dive down underneath into this nest to get myself my first dragon egg. Even though I've got one in my satchel, I mean, I couldn't just let this thing sit here. I had to get it. Next port of call for day one is probably to find some shelter, so I sail out and see what I can see. Maybe a nice village would be good, um, yeah, anything to make sure that I'm okay at night time, but then I come across another dragon nest. Underneath I go to grab this Hydrop Terror, an absolutely sick dragon, and then I almost die on the way back up. The sun has set and I'm back on dry land, I spot some serpentine, so I am out of here. And um, next thing I see is a little cave, so I decide that that's gonna be my home for tonight. Head on over, get inside quick, because I really don't want to die on my first day. Yep, this looks like it's gonna be home. So I make some torches because I'm afraid of the dark, and um, settle in for the night. Oh yeah, make my bed too. Ah, this is actually kind of cozy. Day one complete. Oh yeah, nighttime snack. Never forget about a nighttime snack. Good morning, Minecraft! Okay, they are serpentine and they are everywhere. I'm getting scared immediately. I don't have any armor, but I have to try take this guy out because he's blocking the entrance to my home. So I get to it and boom, I get my first victory royale. Anyway, time to do some mining. I'm getting some more coal because honestly, I probably just want to make more torches because I'm afraid of the dark. But then I come across some iron and that could come in handy for making some armor early on. Because, like I said, I'm um, not the most fearsome warrior you've ever seen. So, back into the boat I go to try and cover some ground a little bit quicker. Um, not much is happening. I don't really know what I'm looking for, but I'm still rolling out. See another little dragon, a nice natter. He's pretty cool, but I get to it again because I find some more iron ore. Gonna build this up, like I said, to try and get myself some armor on day two. Sun is setting again, and I'm rowing my way to... I don't know, but then it happens. There it is, in the distance, a village. Oh yes, I feel like this could be my new home. Back it up, spider, back it up, this is my town. Okay, so this place looks kind of cool, I'm liking it. First village we see, and then I also spot a waystone. Time to click the waystone and make this my new home. Might as well loot this little forge. Thank you very much. Got myself some pickaxes and amazingly diamond armor that I'm never going to use. All right, a lot of mobs outside. Time to go to bed. Day three is here and check this place out. This is definitely the new home of Ropo. Perfect. Bed goes down and also I decide to make a little platform staging area for my beautiful eggs. Is that what that's called? I don't know. Anyway, I cook up some iron and get to work getting my first piece of armor. Oh, I'm Minecrafting now, baby. All right, killing some zombies, going down into this cave because this is Minecraft after all, and I do need to start mining. 
An abundance of iron, exactly what I need. Last piece of the puzzle, I've got myself full iron armor. Feeling good. Killed my first skeleton, and then moved on to a creeper. And I almost died. Okay, this is not good. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow, wow, wee wow. Am I really gonna die on day three? I managed to escape and get some food. Anyway, that was way too hectic for day three, so I'm going to bed. So, day four was upon us, and I knew it was gonna be a good day, because the first thing I see is a diamond. Ah, diamonds. Infamous diamonds. When you find diamonds in Minecraft, it makes you feel extremely good. Anyway, yeah, I set to work to basically try find some more, but when I was looking, I found some fossils. Some dragon fossils. These will become a little bit important later on in the video, so yeah, we'll come back to them. But for now, check this out. I found more diamonds. Ho oh, ho, I knew this was gonna be a good day. So, got to work again, mining these up, and then I decided to make myself a lovely little diamond pickaxe so I could get to work mining obsidian. Everybody knows this takes ages. Anyway, it was a great day, and off to bed I went. Day 5. So this is a big one. We open up our starting satchel and get ourselves a myth egg, some dragon treats, and a dragon orb. Now that we have this egg, we have to go ahead and make a tier 1 lava dragon incubator. This is pretty epic. That goes down, the mid egg goes in, and while that's incubating, I get myself some sheep friends. Hey guys, what's up? Anyway, that egg then is incubated, and it is time to bring this bad boy outside to hatch our first dragon. Oh, this is exciting. I've got to call it Jack. Some of you guys know why. Anyway, this thing is hatched, and it is looking absolutely sick. My first dragon, the mid dragon. Give him some treats to get him leveled up, and I am super happy with how this guy looks. Sun is going down. Another successful day. Jack gets put away on to day six. Alright, day six is here. And I decide to go ahead and use my obsidian to make myself a nether portal. Click it open with my flint and steel. And decide to jump on in. Um, which turned out to not be the best idea because I immediately realized that I was not ready to be in here, so decided to go back home. Not gonna say it was a waste of a day, but not much happened. Day 7 begins with a little bit of exploration close to home, and I actually come across a new dragon nest. This one is a Magnus. Pretty cool, so I get to work getting the egg, and uh, yeah, some resources that are around too. I get back home and decide to make some dragon treats because I want to treat my little dragon. Jack gets leveled up to 10. Day 8, I do some essential crafting. Get myself a wonderful little enchantment table and some bookshelves. Not quite as many as I need and I don't have any lapis, but it's a good start. I decide to finish the day by incubating the new Magnus Egg. So, I think I have the bug, and day 9, I head out on my adventure to see if I can find some more dragon eggs. And straight away, I come across one of the coolest, an elemental dragon. This thing is absolutely sick, so I get to work getting it, and yeah, it's in hand, so I'm super happy. It does get late pretty quickly, though, and I get ambushed by a witch, and oh, this does not look good. I am poisoned, but thankfully, somewhere in my inventory, I've got some milk, and I'm able to survive. Oh, that was close. So, after my near-death experience on day 9, I was hoping for a better day on day 10. Unfortunately, not much happened. I was just out basically seeing what I could find and didn't really come across anything. It got late pretty quickly, so I kind of just had to go to bed because I didn't want to die. So, after day 10 being extremely uneventful, it was time for day 11 to step up to the plate. And it did. We managed to find ourselves a Fire Nation outpost. This will all become clear a little later on, but I found a Fire Nation map. Again, you guys will find out about that later on. Um, decided to loot up this place, got myself an anvil, and took out some of these Fire Nation warriors. Who make really funny sounds. Anyway... Um, yeah, decided to take out the spawners because I didn't want to have to deal with more of those guys and it got me some good XP. But pretty exciting to find one of these things. And then I found a little dog and made him my friend. <laughs> so cute. But um, yeah, then I spent another night in the woods. 
Day 12 started off magically. I found unicorns. They're horses. I'm a liar. Anyway, I did find a lotus egg, which is absolutely beautiful looking. So I got it in hand and moved out. But unfortunately, the actual mom of this egg decided against it. Whoa, okay. She was attacking us and we really had to get out of there. But... I think it was a fight that we had to take on. So I started to battle this girl and it kind of went well until... Yeah, that was my dog dying in the background. Well, that guy didn't last long, but we did find a new egg, a Gronko. So I decided to get this thing and call day 12 a, a day. Call, call, call it a day, yeah. Day 13, my exploring continued, and I come across one of my favorite dragons in the mod. This is a Storm Stratus, so I get to work and get this bad boy in hand, an absolutely majestic dragon. I also harvest up some of this quartz because I think it looks nice. Then I end up finding a Mushroom Island, and um, yeah, I shear them because it's satisfying. Anyway, then I came across a Myth Nest and decided to take some of the obsidian. That obviously takes ages. Ugh. Anyway, got the egg, and that was the day. Day 14, I end up in a desert biome and see a bone napper nest straight away. I want to get this thing, but there are serpentine everywhere, so I just make a run for it, grab the egg, and get out of there. I then realize I'm surrounded by scorpions, a Fire Nation outpost, and it's getting late. But thankfully, I actually come across another village which saves us. We can use the Waystone and actually head back home. No more sleeping out in the woods. I get to go to bed in my own bed. So, now that I was back home, on day 15, it was going to be about construction. So, I put down some of that lovely quartz and my eggs and made myself some more bookshelves to get my enchanting area going. But then I realized it was getting extremely cramped. So, this construction began. I decided to merge my two houses to make a home. This place was going to end up being absolutely amazing. I think. But anyway, I grabbed the incubated Magnus egg and decided to put it down, but realized I had made a terrible mistake. I ended up hatching it. I didn't really want to. So, he was born. You were a mistake. Not the most conventional name for a dragon. Day 16 was upon us, and I actually had to do some work. I needed lapis, so I had to go mining. I spent the whole day mining, as you can see. Ah... Mining, it's not my most favorite thing in the world to do, but there it was. I found it. Finally, I got myself some lapis. So I mined this thing up, and uh, now I was going to be able to do some enchantments. I also found a little diamond, which was a little brucey bonus, so happy days. All right, back to bed, because uh, that was a long day. The next morning, I enchanted some of my tools. Nothing too crazy, but then I realized I really, really need an abundance of food. So I get to baby making with the sheep. That didn't sound very good. Um, anyway, uh, I went further afield and went to a desert biome and ended up finding another encampment, a Fire Nation encampment. So I ended up then finding another piece of the map. Don't worry, it will all become clear. Then I spent the next three days, yes, Three days killing sheep and cows and chickens. I need the food. I really need the food. I need dragon rights. Into day 20 and it began pretty well. I found myself a temple which was pretty cool. So inside the chest I got a lot of bones which is exactly what I wanted. After harvesting all this meat for the last couple of days, I wanted to use it to create dragon treats. So into the crafting table go the bones and all of the meat. And I end up getting a lot of the wonderful, the mythical, the majestic dragon treats that I can then use to go ahead and level up my dragons. Jack was the target. He was getting all of these treats because I wanted to be able to get on his back and actually fly him. So at level 25, he became an adult. And what happened next was magical. I am on my first dragon. We are flying. And this now makes Minecraft oh, so much better. 
Day 21 starts bright and early and I am feeling good because I now have a flying dragon which makes getting around super simple. We end up coming across a clang nest with a clang dragon egg and some iron. So a great start to the day. Then I come across another temple which, I mean, makes the day even better. So I get down and see what I can find. Start taking the stuff and then something big happens. Boom. I get myself a couple of enchantment books that are epic. I get flame and infinity. Oh, what an enchantment to have. So I get back home, put it onto a bow, and I am feeling good, ready for bed. Day 22 and spirits are high. I start off the day by collecting up some lava so I can put it into my incubator to get this clang egg incubated. Pretty cool dragon, so looking forward to that. I then go ahead and make myself some enchanted armor because uh, I can. So I head out at night and immediately start getting attacked by some serpentine, but I've got my dragon with me, so all is good. I ended up finding another, yes, another temple, which is absolutely epic. And what happened next? Well, I can only put it down to the look of the Irish because I found myself a silk touch enchantment book. Oh, you have no idea how much I need this thing. Yes. So the sun comes up on day 23. No real plans for today. So I just set off on Jack to see what I can see. And there it is. Another Fire Nation outpost. So I get down, take a look, start taking out these spawners. Because I don't really want the hassle of taking out some of these Fire Nation guards. So I ended up finding some fire resistance potions and some more bones, which was pretty good. Turns out I didn't get all the spawners and I had to test out my new bow anyway. This gigantic magma golem, he's actually a lot stronger than you would think. So it took me a while, but I eventually took him out. And the last remaining spearsman. See you later, bro. So I'm back home on day 24 and decide there's just a couple of things that I want to get done today. So I go ahead and get some enchanted armor, the helmet and the leggings to complete my iron set of enchanted armor, which I'm pretty happy about. I then go ahead and get my silk touch pickaxe, silky, ooh, and uh, yeah, that will be used later on. Then I go ahead and start feeding all my sheep to make the babies and go to bed. Good day. Day 25, can you believe it? We are a quarter of the way through our 100 days in Minecraft Dragonfire. So to celebrate, I decide to hatch my clang egg and I call it bullion. Now, you might be wondering why I call it bullion when this thing looks kind of iron and silvery, but I can feed it gold. And when I do feed it 64 gold, you'll see why I call it bullion. Anyway, I then get to work slaying all of my sheep. And I don't feel great about it kind of feel like a murderer but uh, yeah I do get a lot of meat so happy days I can now go ahead and make more dragon treats so day 26 begins with trying to find an ice biome and I actually find it pretty quickly with my good man Jack now I start getting some ice with silky my silk touch pickaxe so I can get back home and start making an ice incubator oh yeah I thought I was never going to get one of these things, but I did, so I make some sort of a little ice incubator island thing in the water, and um, I don't know what I was thinking here, but I think it looks cool. But then I realized, now I've got to make a bridge, so I start making a bridge, and that, that takes a while. So uh, yeah, I go ahead, grab my favorite water type dragon, which is the Storm Stratus, give my little bullion a bit of gold, and head over my new bridge and get this thing into the incubator. Now this needs water to actually work, so I get water and put water into... The, I'm saying water a lot, am I? Okay, anyway, that thing's incubating. So day 27 starts out quite strangely with me and a zombie pigman hanging in my living room. But anyway, that prompts me to go to the nether to see if we can go ahead and find a Fire Nation stronghold inside of the nether. And lo and behold, I find it pretty quickly. So I get to work taking out these guys. We've got swordsmen and spearsmen. So yeah, using my bow, which has infinity to take these guys out. They then go ahead and drop me keys, dungeon keys. So I've got to go find a dungeon, which I pretty much do straight away. So head on over into the dungeon right before I go ahead and drink my fire resistance potion because I'm probably going to need it in here. These guys like fire. I mean, seriously, they really, really like fire. Anyway, like I said before, 
I am going to use my bow as much as I can because it has infinity. Gotta watch out for those spikes, but I also want to use my new sword. I got this on day 24, forgot to mention it, but I found this in an encampment in the overworld. It's pretty much a Fire Nation sword that's pretty epic. So anyway, I get to the end of this dungeon, get in and find the lovely Fire Nation chest, which doesn't really have much in it. It's got a blaze rod and some blaze powders, so not great, but... Yeah, let's get out of here. Let's see what we can find. And what we did find was a fortress, which is pretty epic. So I head on inside to see what I can find. I ended up opening a few chests, getting some cool stuff, and also taking out some um, blazes. Those guys freaked me out. But it did get a bit sketchy. It got a bit dangerous, so I got out of there. Anyway, went ahead and found myself another dungeon, so wanted to try out my tier 2 key. I did a tier 1 the last time, so this is going to be a little bit more difficult. So, time to take on the tier 2. Let's get to it. As you can see, there was a lot of mobs in here. Spearsmen, swordsmen, golems, lots and lots of fire. But I managed to get myself all the way through and to the end to open up yet another Fire Nation chest. And this time, ooh, I got myself a Fire Nation spear. So, day 30, not much to report really, I just kind of get organized. I have a lot of stuff on my inventory that needs to be cleared out. I also make some potions. I also make sure that my pickaxe is ready to go by combining two and getting efficiency and unbreaking. Bit of a long day, long couple of days should I say, so I head to bed. So, for the next couple of days, I'm gonna have to do some Minecraft work. Mining. So, I head to the desert biome to see if I can find a new cave system that has been untouched. I go ahead and do that, and the first thing I find is some lapis, which is nice. And then, after that, I basically go and find everything that I need. I get some more lapis, then I find some diamonds, then I find some fossils. Then I find more lapis, and more lapis, and some more fossils, and more diamonds! Okay, this is actually turning out pretty well. I like it. Oh yeah, more diamonds. But... That brings an end to those couple of days. Okay, so days 33 and 34 start off pretty crazy when I go ahead and fix my bow. Costs me nine enchantments. Ugh, makes me shiver. Anyway, I get to the desert biome in search of these things. Scorpions. I need to kill these guys if I'm to get a dungeon key. I don't want just a tier one or a tier two. I want straight away the tier three dungeon key for the desert. So I ended up killing a few of these guys and get what I need. The tier 3 dungeon key. Easily enough, I find a dungeon and I head straight in with my tier 3. That's the chest. That's exactly what I need to get to. So this begins. I've got to admit, man, this was sketchy. These guys are strong. There's traps everywhere. And I mean, they come from all angles. It was seriously sketchy. I had to be on my A game. And I also had to eat a lot of golden apples. Uh, all right. Uh, let me just say it, it was extremely difficult. And also, uh, these guys make seriously funny sounds. <laughs> anyway, I get close to the end. I need the heavy door keys to get these doors open. But I do finally and eventually make it all the way to the last door and to the infamous chest which contains dragon treats and more importantly the rex egg this is basically a combination between a dinosaur and a dragon it doesn't really get much more epic than that so i put that thing on its pedestal and off to bed i go so, day 35 was here, and I started off by grabbing the Rex egg, because I wanted to get this thing incubated. But then I felt, you know what, I want a new dragon right now. So, I went and got the Storm Stratus that has already been incubated, and decided to hatch this thing. I named it Ghost. I don't really know why I named it Ghost, but I did, and I think it's a cool name. Let me know in the comments below if you think it's a cool name, or if I chose a terrible name. I don't know. Ghost. Hmm. Anyway, I put Ghost away for um, a later date because I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with that guy, whether I was going to level him up or not, but then I had a plan. I was going to get to work building all of my dragon science equipment, which took me a long time, but when I got it done, dude, this stuff looks absolutely epic. We will obviously get into this more later in the video, but get excited because dragon science is epic. 
So the next couple of days, well, just went on more maintenance type of stuff. So I got myself some lava, filled the incubator so the Rex egg could be incubated. I then decided farming was super important, but boom, a creeper exploded and let all my sheep out. Gotta be honest, I was super annoyed at this stage, but I know I had to keep going. So I ended up making a little cow pen, a pig pen, and uh, of course the sheep pen. Doing this at night time was probably not the best idea I've ever had, but it worked out in the end. And of course, I did not forget about my little buddy Bullion. He kept on getting the gold. Then, I don't really know why, but I herded some chickens into my house. I, I, don't, I don't know why they're in my house. Anyway, basically, this was totally spent on farming and making sure that I was gonna have enough food to make more dragon treats. So, a new milestone has been reached, day 40, and I decide I want to get myself the most famous dragon of all, a Night Fury. So, I head out in search for one, but basically, I end up finding a lot more dragons than I bargained for. The first one I find is a Silva, I pick it up and head on out. Again, I find another dragon, this time it's another, so I stop and pick it up again. I really wanted to find a Night Fury, but along the way, I just keep on finding more and more dragons. So I've got to stop, I've got to harvest these eggs, and keep going. Got myself a little diamond as well before I took this catastrophic quaking. Almost couldn't get that out there. I got it though. Nailed it. No, well, I didn't nail it, but... Okay, sorry. Anyway, on to the next one. A floating island that contains a Terex. This dragon is absolutely epic and is also involved in dragon science, so we might see it down the line in the future. Next up, I find a Drake. A seriously common egg, but also really cool looking. Anyway, next thing I find is a waystone, which I grab. Next thing I come across is another Fire Nation encampment, and I find another piece of the map. That is all pieces now found. I end up killing an enderman and a zombie, which gets me my first ender pearl, which is pretty cool also. I then go home because I need to get organized. I have a full inventory of dragons, and I also want to put down a waystone inside my house so I don't have to walk the extra couple of meters. Anyway, I've got a full Fire Nation map now that we'll come back to in the future. But for now, I put away my eggs and let my adventure continue by wasting all of my enchantments on getting my armor repaired. It had to be done. Anyway, next I go and find a knight-like dragon. No, wait, this is not a knight-like. This is a zippleback. I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyway, this thing is pretty sick, but I realize I'm under attack by some frog spearsmen. Yeah, we, we don't get to those guys in this. Days 100 to 200. If I do that, I'll come back to it. Anyway, new biome, an ice biome. We found more dragons. We got this time a Titan Woolly Hell. Seriously cool dragon. I kept going, and the next thing I found was a catastrophic Quaken. One of the biggest dragons in the game. These guys are insanely big, so I went in, grabbed the egg, and got straight back out of there. I didn't want to mess with those dudes. Anyway, next I took on an Ice Golem, Snow Golem. Not really sure what he's called, but he's dead now, so rip him. Anyway, new egg is a shard. I pick this thing up and head out again. And then I find a Night Fury Temple. This thing is insanely cool, so I head on up inside, check it out, and also put down a waystone, because I want to be able to get back to this in the future, because as you guys will see, coming up later in the video, this thing does something pretty magical for us. Anyway, I get going again, and this time, in the rain, I find one of the rarest dragons in the game, a Light Fury. This thing is absolutely beautiful, so I get down and I grab the egg. I still am looking for a Night Fury, though, which is kind of frustrating, but, I mean, look at this thing. It's beautiful. I head back home and drop off more of the dragon eggs, because, like I said, my inventory is totally full now. We have a serious amount of dragon eggs, but I head out again into a desert biome this time beside a savanna. But anyway, the next egg that I find is a Nightbringer and also loot up this place because there's a lot of cool stuff in this nest. But like I said with the savannah, a savannah is exactly where a Night Fury actually spawns. So this is my chance. I'm in a savannah, I just gotta search this place and hope that there is a Night Fury in here somewhere. So as the time ticks on, I'm searching, I'm searching. And I actually find it, a Night Fury nest buried down a little bit in this savannah biome. 
but I am absolutely delighted because I actually found it. And yes, that creeper nearly ruined everything, but it was okay because I enchanted my armor. Oh man, sometimes stuff just pays off. But anyway, let's get in here. Let's grab this thing. I actually did it. I actually found a Night Fury egg. Super exciting. Exactly what I wanted. Man, I am happy. What a crazy few days. Whew, okay, those last couple of days were hectic, so day 44, basically more maintenance. Farming, uh, getting lava, just getting organized. So day 45 was upon us, and as you know, I went through a lot to try and get this Night Fury egg, but something was going wrong with my incubator. It was taking way too long, and then I realized I need to upgrade this thing. I need to get a tier 5 incubator. So after a lot, and I mean a lot of resources, I end up getting a tier 5 lava incubator, which looks absolutely awesome epic so i go ahead fill this thing with lava and try get this night fury incubating but it takes forever just shows how epic night furies are ah oh, good morning day 46 and there it is my night fury is incubated so heading straight outside to get this thing hatched click it out and realize this guy needs a name. So I get into my Discord and I pick the first person that said something and that was Fave Dog and they said Bane. So my Night Fury was called Bane. Pretty cool name. Woohoo! Check out this guy. Super cool. He gets some chicken straight away, even though they like fish. Um, I don't have any fish. So I went ahead, made myself a cool fishing rod. The first thing I catched was actually. Catched? Did I just say catched? First thing I caught was an obsidian fish, which is a seriously cool catch because it makes the dragons instantly happy when you feed it to them. Anyway, I got to work leveling this guy up. I used all the dragon treats I had and managed to get him all the way up to level 60 because at that point I am able to get on and fly my very own Night Fury. And as you can see, this guy's wingspan is absolutely massive, so he is super, super fast. But I want him to be a level 100, so I've got a plan. Over the next three days, I try to go ahead and execute that plan. So I start building materials to actually go ahead and build a chicken farm. Yeah, I don't proclaim to be a good Minecraft builder or anything like that, so this is why this thing took me so long. Um, yeah, see this magma block going down? That's what's gonna kill the chickens, and this redstone thing is gonna do a thing, and yeah, I just copied some guy off YouTube, and basically, this is the chicken farm. So, I get the chickens, lure them all the way up to the top, and this is probably my favorite part, once they start going into it. I, I, I felt really satisfied. I felt good. Haha, <laughs> see you later losers. Anyway, I was nearly complete with this chicken farm after two or three days and happy enough that these chickens were gonna get killed by the magma block and end up getting me free chicken that I could then turn into dragon treats. So I finished off the final day by feeding these guys up to try create more little babies to get more food. So, I made it halfway and to celebrate I decided I wanted to make myself some diamond armor. I mean, it's Minecraft. I need diamond armor, seriously. So I use what diamonds I have to create my chest plate and my leggings, but then realized I need a lot more. So before I went and got those diamonds, I checked on my farm. Gotta be honest, it wasn't doing great, but at least it was some free chicken. Anyway, got down mining and did go ahead and actually find some diamonds, so I was pretty happy with that. Got back up and finished off my diamond armor set, which is pretty cool. Didn't want to enchant it yet, though, because, yeah, I, I just don't have enough enchantments. But, yeah, diamond armor. Day 50. Happy days. Okay, so on to days 52 and 53. Wasn't really sure what I wanted to do, so just started off by feeding the chickens to try create more. It wasn't giving me that much food, so I decided it was time to harvest up all these sheep. I always feel so evil when I'm doing this, but the pigs had to get it as well. And the cows. I then used that meat with the bones to go ahead and create more dragon treats, because as you know, they're super important in getting our dragons leveled up and have the ability to fly. For some reason, then I decided I want some magma cream because I want to make fire resistance potions, so that's what I did. I went to the nether and made myself some potions. Anyway, that morning I went outside and built some sort of a structure. It was kind of a 
podium, pedestal, pit, Thing. I don't really know why I built that. But anyway, um, I used the dragon treats that I had made to get Bane up to level 80. We're still 20 off getting this thing to 100, but I mean, level 80 Night Fury. We're getting there. So, days 54 and 55 turned out to be actually pretty epic. I started off with Bullion. He was about to get his final piece of gold to turn him from a normal clang into a gold clang. I told you guys I was calling him bullion for a reason. <laughs> oh yes, he looks absolutely sick. A gold clang dragon. I love this guy. Pretty cool start, but I did want to achieve today, so I decided to make myself some fire resistant potions and some golden apples because I wanted to get back into the nether and take on more Fire Nation dungeons to try to get my experience up and, well, ultimately see if I can get to a tier 3. So I ended up taking my potions and got straight into it, taking out everything that stood in my way. Honestly, it was pretty easy once I had these potions on. I got to the end and found myself a chest, opened it up to find absolutely nothing. Okay, I was kind of angry at this stage, but what can you do? You've just got to keep going. That's the thing about this. There's a chance you'll get something, there's a chance you won't, but yeah, I had to keep going. Anyway, I went and found another stronghold and took out some more Fire Nation guards to try and find that infamous tier 3 key, which I actually managed to do, so I was happy again. Time to get this key and head to the dungeon. So I made it down to the dungeon and I used my tier three key to get inside here. Now these can be extremely tricky because they're a lot bigger and there is lava everywhere. My fire resistance potion kind of wasted halfway through so I had to be extremely careful but I actually managed to do it. I got the final heavy door key and headed to where I needed to be. And that was the room that contained the flame spitter dragon and the diamond chest. Now if I got lucky there was going to be a flame spitter egg inside this chest so let's go ahead kill these guys and open it up and see if we get lucky. I mean, I wouldn't be so chirpy if we didn't get lucky. We obviously got lucky. Boom. There it is. We got the flame spitter egg, so it was all worth it in the end with some blaze powder and blaze rods. So I was pretty happy with these couple of days. I went back home, put the egg away, and felt satisfied. But extremely tired, so I went to bed. Whew. Well, the next four days kind of start a new chapter in our little adventure here, but it starts off with me going on the search for an obelisk. But... Of course, I get distracted because I see one of my favorite dragons in the game. This, in fact, is a nightlight dragon. This thing is absolutely sick, and I really, really hope that I get to hatch that thing. But we'll see in the future. Anyway, I do go ahead and find an obelisk. What is this, you ask? Well, you're gonna find out, so just be patient, okay? I mean, just just chill out. Anyway, I, uh, I break this thing and decide to bring it home, and I knew I made this thing for a reason. Yeah, this is gonna house my obelisk, which, in fact, gets us to the Darklands. Yeah, this mod is absolutely epic. In here, we have wolves. Lots of wolves. I mean, wolves absolutely everywhere, which is good for me because I need the experience and I need the bones to create dragon treats. So, that's the plan for the next while, is to spend my time in the Darklands. Until I come across this. Yeah. I wasn't really sure what this was for a minute, but then I realized this is a seabrus. So I gave it a little hit, decided to eat a golden apple because I know these things are powerful, and I just started a boss battle. Yep, <laughs> this is the seabrus boss battle. He caught me with a nice shot, but I persevered, and eventually I was able to take this thing down. And on its death, it actually drops two pretty cool things. We get some fire essence and the seabrus head. Anyway, I wanted to get my experience going, so I decided to actually go into a Lycan dungeon. This was a tier 1, so mainly just use for experience. I got to kill a lot of wolves, and I mean a lot of wolves. It takes a long time, but it's worth it. Like I said, experience and bones, it all pays off in the end. The werewolf... That's a different story. They're a little bit of hassle because it takes a while, but eventually when you get to the end, you get yourself a lichen chest. This time, I ended up getting a lichen helmet and a lot of bones. Let me show you this thing. This is the lichen helmet, and let's be honest, it is probably the coolest armor piece in Minecraft. It's so good. 
So I decided this was the plan. We're going to keep on going into these lichen dungeons to see what we can get. Again, we've got to kill a lot of stuff, but when we get to the end, we get another chance of finding more bones and more armor. This time, I was lucky enough to get a chest plate. It's all coming together with some epic armor. Taking a break from the dungeons, I end up coming across, well, it's an old graveyard. This is actually a dragon nest area. I know it's a graveyard, I know it's crazy, I know it's creepy, and it's extremely dangerous, as you can see by these poisonous spiders that absolutely ruined me. But eventually I was able to fight back and get inside and take out the spawners. Yeah, I nearly died about five times, plus the only food I had was potatoes, so I actually don't even know how I survived this. But anyway, we get in and we find the zombie dragon egg. If I get to hatch this thing eventually, you guys will see it. It's insane. But I was happy with that. Again, more experience, more adventure, more new dragon eggs. But we continued on killing more and more of these wolves. Well, that time my dragon did. And uh, I decided it was time to go home to get organized because, again, my inventory was pretty full. Anyway, back inside, I put down the fire essence because as you will see in the future, that comes in extremely handy. <laughs> oh man, it's so good. And I put down the Seabur's head as a little bit of decoration because I think it looks absolutely epic. I then go ahead and put on my diamond armor because, well, I'm after getting the new lichen armor and I can now use this armor, even though it's not enchanted. I head back into the Darklands because, well, I wasn't finished in here yet. So it was time for a tier 2 lichen dungeon. I mean, this one is a lot harder because there are a lot more werewolves, but I did in fact eventually get through it. Took me a while because these werewolves, ugh, like I mean, they're so annoying. Just die. Anyway, I pick up the heavy door key and get to where I need to be. And that place I need to be is right at the end where the tier two chest lies. Inside, I find myself a lichen shield and a lichen bow with some more bones, which is pretty epic. Now, my bow I have is pretty sick, so I probably won't use the lichen bow, but what I will use is the shield, because I haven't used the shield for this whole entire time. Uh, anyway, okay, we're getting distracted. We then found a mummy egg. This thing is just as creepy as the zombie egg, but also there is some cool stuff in here that I loo up as well. Alright, time to do another dungeon. This time again a tier 1 because I do want to go ahead and get the full set of armor. This time I found the boots and the spare helmet, which was pretty epic. But like I said, I wanted to get the full set of armor, so I had to go and do another dungeon. Tier 1 once again. Again, I get to the end, take out the final wolves and go and see what's inside the chest and I actually get extremely lucky and get the leggings. That now is a full set of lichen armor. So I'm extremely exhausted after those couple of days, time to get back home and basically see what I'm after achieving. And what that is, is a full set of the lichen armor which looks really really cool. I cannot wait to go ahead and enchant that. But first bed. Okay, so I don't mind saying myself, the last 10 days were absolutely insane, absolutely epic. So this is the part where it takes a little bit of a look. I have to spend the next 10 days doing extremely boring things. Basically, being a farmer. I have to feed the cows, feed the pigs, feed the sheep, get as many as I can because I need all that glorious meat to go ahead and make dragon treats. My chicken farm was working very well, but like I said, this is 10 days. This is a lot of work. <laughs> Look at the amounts of them. Anyway, yeah, I decided to kill all of the sheep. Oh man, it, 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 this, it's, it's a bit dark, isn't it, right? I, I don't know. Anyway, I kill all the pigs as well. I mean, there is a lot of them, a, a, a lot. And then I kill all the cows. This actually took a long time as well. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. But anyway, after my 10 days, I have an abundance of meat products. I have an abundance of bones, which means I can then go ahead and turn it into an abundance of dragon trees, which is exactly what I wanted. Hard graft for 10 days, but worth it. Oh, oh that was so much hassle, you have no idea. 
Day 70. Monumental. Okay, so I want this day to be special, so I grab some of the dragon trees that I spent 10 days creating and get my man Bane from level 80 all the way up to level 100. My first level 100 dragon is my Knife Fury. This guy is super sick and I am super proud of him. I think I need to take him for a fly. Yeah, anyway, yeah, I'm super, super excited about this guy because he's level 100 for a reason. And that reason is dragon science. So as you can see there, I have just made myself some DNA orbs. I grab my DNA extractor from my dragon science room and head over to Bane and extract his DNA. Yes, <laughs> this is getting crazy. But anyway, I now have the DNA of a Night Fury dragon. So I head back to the DNA combiner in the lab that contains the iron egg and now my Night Fury DNA. I go get all the fossilized bones to create a fossilized dragon you see you guys didn't trust me he's like what's he doing with all those fossils yeah you're about to find out so that now goes into the DNA combiner as well it syncs up with the DNA of the night fury and we get ourselves a bone fury egg we have just completed our first piece of dragon science this egg goes into the DNA incubator and this could take a while but that's gonna give us one crazy cool dragon so at this stage, my mind is firmly set on dragon eggs. And as I am in my house, I kind of realized that I've got a couple on display and most of them in the chests and it's not really that cool. So I want to make some sort of a display area. So I get to work, go down, make myself a basement and get some excavation done. At this point, I don't really know what I'm doing, but it ends up working out. Um, I make pillars and kind of pedestals and... Basically, it turns out to be a cool little dragon egg display case situation. We've got kind of magma on the top, we've got ice on the bottom to signify the different types of dragons, and when I thought everything was going super well, I went to put down the Rex egg and oof. Yeah, I forgot that this thing was incubated, so I actually hatched the egg. Meet whoops. This is my next dragon. Oh man, this is the dinosaur dragon, which is actually really, really cool. But I didn't mean to hatch it, but he's here now. So yeah, another mistake. Anyway, back to my cool display case. I get these eggs down and I've got to be honest, I'm happy how this thing turns out. It looks pretty sick. So, waking up on day 74, I am extremely excited because check this out, inside the DNA incubator, my egg is actually incubated. So, we crack it open using the incubator and this thing is now ready to be hatched. The excitement is real. Alright, it's a female, I can't really think of a name, so I think of He-Man and Skeletor, um, nostalgia, whatever, and uh, this thing gets hatched. It's Skeletor, my bone fury dragon. The first of our dragon science dragons. He also likes brains, which is a bit of a bonus, so happy days. I treat him with some tre treats. Uh, that sentence doesn't really go well together. But um, yeah, <laughs> I get him up to level 5. This guy is sweet. But the day's not finished yet. So I head inside and do something that I've wanted to do for a few days now. And that's enchant my epic lycan armor. So I get to work enchanting all of this stuff. And I've got to be honest, this armor looks better than I could ever imagine. It's so, so cool. We're now into the final quarter of our 100 days. So I realize we're getting towards the business end. I need to get myself some Eyes of Ender. So I go on the hunt for Enderman. Get a couple of kills and manage to get a couple of pearls. But I've got to be honest, it's so much hassle. It takes so much time. But I then head home and get the couple of Eyes of Ender that I've worked so hard for. I have got four. Okay, so day 76, I thought that my four eyes of Ender would get me where I needed to be, and the unthinkable happened. I never pressed record. But then I saw that I didn't repress record, and then I, I was at the... Okay, this video's taken me two weeks, I got tired of points, but anyway, we got to an area where I thought the end portal was. Yes, it was here. I dug down, and I found the end fortress, which was absolutely insane. I felt good, I was happy, my mishap with the recording... It didn't matter anymore, because I got the achievement, and I got in. Ah, 
Yes. Anyway, then I realized that my bow was about to break. Well, not really about to break, but it was pretty weak, so I wanted to fix it. And then I came home to fix it, and it cost me 19 enchantments. I really don't know why I did that. But anyway, I did it, and it's done. So I headed back to the end fortress to see if I could find the portal. And hey oh, I did. Check this thing out. I went ahead, broke the spawner, went up, and discovered that there was one. One Eye of Ender. Are you kidding me? So, after a big achieve there a second ago, the next couple of days, um, kind of just doing laborious tasks. Getting stuff organized at home, and realizing that I need a lot of Eyes of Ender, so I'm gonna have to go find a lot of Ender Pearls. But, I kind of get a little bit distracted and head outside with some Dragon Treats to my man Skeletor to get him up to level 25, when he does actually look pretty epic, but unfortunately I can't fly him yet. So I jump on my Night Fury and head on out to see if we can find some Enderman. So as we've just said, um, the main goal here is to try find Enderman and in turn Ender Pearls. But when you go exploring out in these lands, it's too hard not to find cool stuff. As you can see, I just took a shot from a skeleton there, but I ended up finding this cool, extremely rare rainbow dragon egg, which I had to get. I then got myself to a desert biome and ended up finding some endermen. So I got to work trying to take these guys out and did in fact go ahead and find some pearls. It took a while, but I started using my shields, so um, yeah, it only took 80 days for me to actually learn how to Minecraft. So, so that that's that's a, that's a, that's a positive, I suppose. Anyway, yeah, I kept on going, new areas, new lands, and more Endermen. In turn, more Ender Pearls. Eventually, I was trying to make my way home, but again, I did find another dragon nest, and this time it is a new dragon, something that I don't have. I um, can't remember the name of it right now, so I'm just going to keep going. But anyway, then I found a Night Stalker. This thing is absolutely epic and involved in the dragon science, so I took that and was pretty happy with it. Again, I got to work with finding more Endermen and getting more Ender Pearls, avoiding all the danger. I then got home, turned my 10 pearls into 10 eyes of ender i was super happy but kind of took a wrong turn on the way back to the end portal and managed to find a skrill egg so yep i had to get it and i also picked up some diamonds so i mean worth it anyway we were back at the end portal and i discovered that being tired really messes with your brain i thought there was two here you guys know there was only one, so I had 10 Ice Fender with 11 spaces. I still needed one more, are you kidding me? I'm so dumb, it's insane! Ah, okay, so I put down an away stone and named this area End Portal because I wanted it to be easy to come back here because I realized I had made such a big mistake. And then I went and found my last Enderman to get my last End Pearl. And I literally, actually nearly died. These frogs came out of nowhere and poisoned me so bad. Can you imagine if I had it died there? Seriously. But I had it. I had the final Eye of Ender that I needed. I was going to bed. So, after making a couple of dumb mistakes over the last couple of days, I decided days 82 and 83 were going to be completely dedicated to getting an end chest ready so basically a chest full of all the things that i'm going to need to survive in the end fight against the end dragon so i make a whole lot of potions and um golden apples and basically all the things that i think i'm going to need put them all into a chest and feel pretty satisfied that i am an epic nerd that is over prepared Day 84 arrives, and I do feel like I'm ready to go to the Ender Dragon fight, but there's one place that we have not been yet. I end up creating the Fire Nation map, so we can actually use this to go to the Fire Nation dimension. This is absolutely insane, and there is a reason why we do need to go in here. It's extremely dangerous, so 
I've got to be honest, I kind of didn't want to spend too much time in here. Like I said before, if we end up doing uh, 100 to 200 days, we might come back. But I ended up getting another kill on a Cerberus, which meant I got some more Fire Essence, which kind of gave me the idea of... I want to use that. I want to make sure that I have the best possible dragon. But before I went home, I did come across this gigantic, massive, and absolutely huge Fire Nation tower. So instead of going through all the layers and all the levels, I just flew straight to the top, took out a two of these guys, and checked out what was inside this chest. And what was in there was some more fire resistance potions, which I can use, and more importantly, more of these crystals. I think I had everything I needed. Day 85, we are actually getting close to the end. This is crazy, so I wanna start doing some end game type of things. I grab the crystals, I grab the fire essence, and I go to my waypoint, cause I wanna go to the Night Fury Temple that we found a couple of days ago. This place is pretty cool, and you're about to find out why. The Night Fury Anvil. This thing is so good. The essence goes in, the crystals go round, and we create the Flame Fury Stone. One time use, let's go. <laughs> you will not believe what this thing can do. Oh man, I'm so, I'm so excited about this thing, but I'm not ready. So I put it up here for safekeeping. Don't worry, it's going to be worth the wait. So, day 86, I do more preparation. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. That's my motto. I, I want to be prepared. So, I decide to get some dragon treats and level up some of my dragons to make sure that I have spare dragons when I go to the end fight. I want to make sure that these guys can fly. I want to make sure that they're in reserve, that if I lose my main dragon, that these guys can come out and help me fight as well. So there you have it, Skeletor up to level 60 and now super fast. I then go ahead and get Jack up to level 50, which he actually is insanely strong and now fast as well. Okay, okay, I cannot leave you guys in suspense any longer. It is day 87 and it is time to use the Flame Fury Stone. I'm pretty sure some of you guys can guess what's about to happen here, but I wanted it to be special. So I made this amazingly epic and wonderfully so cool fire shrine type of thing. I told you I'm not a great builder. I mean, it looks kind of cool, but we're ready to do this. We use the Flame Fury Stone on my Night Fury to create a flame fury. Oh, look at this guy. He is by far the best dragon in the game. Absolutely epic. Level 100 flame fury. This thing will not be defeated. Oh my days, Bane. You look unbelievable. The final few days were now approaching, and that means the final battle was approaching, so I checked out my preparation chest and realized that I think I had everything I needed. So put on my armor, and um, yeah, let's face it, let's take a look at me right now. This is by far the coolest armor you have ever seen in Minecraft. I am so ready for this. So, we use the waystone, we get to the end portal, and I use my last Eye of Ender to open up this portal with the most satisfying sound that you have ever heard in your life. Oh, I love it so much. We did make a show of ourselves before that getting to the last Ender portal, but whatever. Okay, let's get back to it. I arrive, and I am not happy. I'm kind of on the edge, and it, it scares me loads, and I'm getting anxiety, and I'm like, ah, freak out. But then I realize I've got a dragon to fight a dragon. Th this isn't going to be that hard at all. I mean... I can use his plasma blast to just take out all the towers and this makes it incredibly easy. Why did I prepare so much? Why have I got so many potions with me and so many golden apples? It's probably because I'm a little bit of a noob and I kind of was a little bit scared, but check out how easy this was. It was so good and before I knew it, I was taking my first shot at the Ender Dragon and BOOM! absolutely nailed him oh it felt so good second shot goes in and i mean he is down halfway already this is epic i finally get down the ground and take the last few shots with my fire nation spear and that's all she wrote it was done i defeated the ender dragon just like that oh man it felt so good Give me all that delicious XP! Let's 
go. I struggled so much for XP throughout this whole 100 days because I was using the waystones a lot. But it feels so good picking up all this delicious XP. But man, the next pickup was the big pickup. I actually got the Ender Dragon Egg. We have spent this whole 100 days getting dragon eggs, but the infamous and amazing Ender Dragon Egg was now in hand. I had some celebratory food, did a well-deserved lap of honor, and then just decided to finish the game. I'm, 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 I'm really smug right now, aren't I? When you're happy and you're nappy, clap your hands. Wait, oh. The last 10 days began with more smugness. I made a grave for the Ender Dragon. <laughs> ah, loser. N not me, the Ender Dragon. Anyway, so day 90, we decided to head back to the End Portal to go in and find an End City because that's the next stage in Minecraft. And uh, I want some Elytra Wings. So we get in, I build a little stairs up, get myself an Ender Pearl, and you hate. In I go, and then you get, you always get in here and you're like, oh man, am I even gonna be able to find my way back? And it, I've got a dragon. It is so easy to get around. It's incredible, and I absolutely love it. It didn't take me long. I found it. I found an end city and a floating ship. Therefore, I was about to find myself some elytra wings. And, of course, I did. So when you grab these things from an item frame, I mean, it gives you such a sense of achievement and an actual achievement, but still, I was feeling good, I decided to grab the Ender Dragon head because, let's face it, that looks absolutely hilarious. Ah <laughs> man, I love that so much. But then I head up to one of the end cities, take a look around, mess with some shulkers, and find some chests with some nice loot in, but like I said before, I mean, I don't even know if I need any of this stuff because I'm feeling so confident. Grab a spare set of Elytra because I can and uh, yeah, decide to just head back home because I've got a couple of things I want to do for the last couple of days. So into the portal I go. First of which was to create some sort of a centerpiece display for my wonderful and amazing Ender Dragon Egg. So I popped it down in the middle of the Dragon Egg and... Um, Display room, I, I don't know, chamber? So, I don't know, I don't have a name for that. Anyway, then I trolled the Ender Dragon some more by finishing off his grave with his head. Yeah, I kind of feel bad now. Yeah, then I put my um, leftover potions into a shulker box for safekeeping and off to bed I went. So the next couple of days start off with a massive fail. I wanted to upgrade my ice incubator, so I needed some ice. I went traveling, took a while, and I found a snow biome, and then Ooh. decided to get... I, I brought the wrong pickaxe. Are you kidding me? One eternity later. I actually raged pretty hard when that happened. I mean, it, it cost me about 20 minutes, but what are you going to do? I got the ice, so I was then able to go ahead and get the tiers of the ice incubator all the way up to tier five so I could obviously have a tier five incubator. So that happened and I was happy even though I was sad a minute ago, but it was all good. So I decided I wanted to hatch a couple of eggs. I had a spare rainbow, so I decided to get that into the incubator because I mean, this is Minecraft Dragonfire and we have to end strong. I then grab the Night Stalker egg. This is an epically cool dragon and it's involved in dragon science. So my plan for an epic ending starts with that thing. We then head outside to go ahead and hatch the rainbow dragon and I name it after one of my fans in the discord. That's cute, isn't it? Yeah, man, that, that's cute. Hey, and there she was, Bobby Dobby. <laughs> the coolest little rainbow dragon. Yeah, but then I realized that these guys like to eat golden apples and golden cards, so this was going to be an expensive dragon. Anyway, I then got on to the Night Stalker. I decided to call this thing Luna. Luna, Moon, Night Stalker. Pretty cool name. And uh, yeah, there she was. It was a he. It's a, it's a he. I, I, get, I get confused. There's so many of them. Anyway, he was out, and I decided I wanted to get this guy leveled up straight away, because like I said before, this guy is involved in dragon science, so I wanted to get him all the way up to level 100. I got to work. At level 25, he kind of changes and becomes this insanely cool stalker type. Night stalker, he kind of stalking, you know, he looks epic. Anyway, I think I got him up to like level 89 or something. Not quite 100, but 
a successful couple of days. So, we were into the last five days of my 100 days in Minecraft Dragonfire, and I was actually getting pretty excited. I had a big plan, so back into the Darklands dimension I went because basically I needed bones. And lots of bones. Like, bones, bones, and more bones. Hey, dog, can I have your bone? Thank you very much. So, yeah, the plan was to get... I think I need, like, 112 or 120 bones or something. Basically, I need a lot of dragon treats to get two dragons all the way up to level 100 to do some dragon science. So... I then went on and found myself a vampire nest. This dragon is crazy cool, the vampire dragon. It likes to drink blood. You get blood from the blood tree. Yep, yeah, I know, it's crazy, but it's also so, so cool. Anyway, I got back to work getting some more bones and also taking a lot of hits from those guys. Anyway, back home I went and got this vampire dragon egg into the incubator because, uh, yeah, that was one of the dragons I needed to get to level 100. I then got to slaying the animals again because I needed all the meat I could get. But soon realized I don't think I had enough. But finished off the couple of days by feeding Luna and getting her up to level 100. Him. It's, it's, it's a him. It's not a her. I'm, I get so confused. But yeah, epic dragon, level 100. Happy days. Day 98 was upon us, and I began to realize that taking on such a mammoth task right at the end was probably not the best idea I've ever had, but I got to it anyway. Hatched the vampire dragon, tried to come up with a name, couldn't for a while, and then realized this thing has to be called Blade. Blade, the movie? The... I think he's a vampire. I, I can't really remember, but yeah, I, I realized that I now had to go ahead and get a crazy, crazy amount of meat because I need to get that guy up to level 100 to basically combine him with the Night Stalker to create a hybrid dragon science dragon. Anyway, I then got to making as many dragon treats as I could, made a lot, and still realized that I didn't have enough. But then it occurred to me, there's chickens inside the chicken farm and they all must die. So I killed them and now they're all dead. But I think now that I had enough chicken and meat to make the dragon treats that I needed. Ah, oh, success. Day 99. Can you actually believe it? I'm actually kind of emotional right now, but it was time to use all these dragon treats that we slaved over for the last couple of days to get Vampire Blade all the way up to level 100. At level 25, he kind of changes, looks super dark and scary, but I think he's pretty awesome. So we got to it and leveled him up as much as we could. And at the end of day 99, as the clock ticked down, we actually did it. We made it to 100 days in Minecraft Dragonfire. We survived. We made epic things. Dragons, armor, I mean everything. And I was about to create a hybrid dragon using two level 100 dragons, but it's surviving 100 days in Minecraft. This is only day 100. I have another day to go. So, safe to say we did it. We did actually survive 100 days in Minecraft, but I wanted my last day to be special. I wanted to create something special. I wanted something epic. So, I went ahead and got the DNA from my level 100 Vampire Dragon and the DNA from my level 100 Night Stalker Dragon so I could combine them. Back into my Dragon Science room I go, I get the DNA and the Iron Egg into the combiner and wait for the magic to happen. They combine and I now have a Nightula Egg. I did want this to end on something cool, and this is definitely something cool. So the incubator gets to work, we crack open this egg, and it is ready to be hatched. A hybrid dragon, the Nightula. This thing is absolutely sick. So we bring it outside, and there's only one name that we can call it. Sentry. I mean, it is 100 days. So I give this guy some dragon treats, and there it is. We come to an end. 100 days in Minecraft Dragonfire. It was insane. It was crazy. It was awesome. I loved it. I hated it. I mean, it was so much work, but I think what I've got in the end is something really, really cool. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And if you want me to do 200 days, all you got to do is share the love on this video and let me know in the comments. Man, I'm exhausted, but I'm happy. 
and I hope you guys really enjoyed that. If you're still here watching at this point in the video, it probably means that you did enjoy it and it probably means that you want to check out this mod. So I will leave a link in the description to the Patreon where you can go ahead and get this mod for yourself. It's so good, I love it, and I hope you do too. So once again, guys, thank you so, so much for watching. Thanks for sticking around. I hope you did enjoy it. And uh, yeah, if you did, just hit a little like rating and subscribe if you are new to the channel. That helps a lot. I really appreciate it. Worked hard on this one. So um, yeah, to see some love, it'll be good. But um, I think I'm out. I enjoyed it. Kind of don't want it to end now. Peace. Mm -hmm.